Hello fellow readers and readresses. September is long gone, which means that it's time to look back upon the month and see what we've read during that time. I'm gonna go through all the books that I've been able to read in the order in which I picked them, not in the order in which I finished them, if that makes sense to you. Let's start with some stats. I was able to finish nine books and I still have one that I started but wasn't able to complete. In terms of genre, we have six fantasy books, three classics, and one nonfiction. The beginning of September was a rather weird time because work has just started to pick up again and I was still feeling in the mood for adventure, not for work. So I decided to kind of satiate that desire in myself by reading an epic adventure fantasy and that was Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. I started this one on the 31st of August and was able to complete it by the 10th of September. I enjoyed it very much. It is a bind up of the first two books in the Ryeria Revelation series by Michael J. Sullivan. It is an adult epic fantasy and it follows a mercenary and a thief who are contracted to steal a sword and from there they get themselves into a lot, a lot of trouble. It is very highly entertaining. It has a beautiful world that has a rich history. The main characters that we follow are funny and witty and um, good people. So uh, I very much enjoyed it. I kind of managed to guess a lot of the twists. I had heard a lot about Michael J. Sullivan before I picked this book up and I'm very happy that I finally did so. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find it in the original covers before it was picked by Orbit, uh, the books were self-published and they had these very generic fantasy covers, which I love. They're my favorite type. And I was trying to find them in that version, but I couldn't. So I picked up the, the ones from Tor Thor. Anyway, it's a great book. I highly recommend it. I can't wait to continue with the rest of the series. I was actually planning in the beginning to kind of binge read it, but the plans changed because my uh, motivations changed, so to speak. In my Goodreads review, I put that if I had to follow strictly technicalities of writing style and of plotting, I would probably have given this one four stars, but I don't have to, and I enjoyed it a lot to give it five stars. And then, because I was craving a classic, I picked up Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I picked this one on the 5th of September and finished it by the 7th. Now, this book is very interesting. I don't have it physically. I read it as an ebook, but I've been hearing a lot about it for the longest time and some people that I've whose opinions I very much respect, have given it a lot of praise. But when I heard it summarized, I thought that this is gonna be boredom with no end. So I wasn't feeling very incentivized to pick it. I don't know if that's the right phrase to use here, but I didn't really wanna read it. And then I decided to bite the bullet because I was looking through classics online, you know, with high reviews, and this one kept on popping up. So I was like, okay, it's not very long, I'll give it a try. And I did, and I am so happy I did. I highly recommend it. It follows a young man with extraordinary beauty who befriends a painter and um, a rich lord. And the painter draws a very beautiful picture of Dorian and gifts it to him. And uh, Dorian is fascinated with his own um, beauty. He's also a nice person by all accounts. But then because of the influence of this other lord that he befriended, he starts doing rather despicable things. I'm not gonna say any more than that. I highly advise you to read it. It's a philosophical look on humanity and on the bad things that we do and how they reflect upon us, not only on the inside, but even on the outside sometimes. It's a contemplation of what leading a life of self-service can lead you to if you have no scruples and how your entire being can be affected by that. I thought about this book quite a lot after finishing it and I was initially a little bit frustrated because some of the information in the book seems to be omitted, like the exact nature of the sins that our main character is committing is often not revealed and there's one specific scene where he's blackmailing someone and it's not revealed exactly with what information and that bugged me for a while but then when i was trying to figure out whether there's any hints in the book as to what the guy has done and i couldn't find any but i was trying to conjure it in my mind i kept on coming up with these heinous things and then i went online and googled what people think and a lot of people so many people had so many different mm, theories as to what it might be and it struck me that what their ideas are reflects what they find the most 
heinous of crimes, their morals are reflected in their imagination of what this guy might have done. And I think that's the genius of this book in a lot of ways, that by omitting the exact nature of the things that the author has meant, it gives us the opportunity to participate actively in the story. And I gave it five stars. Highly recommend it. If you haven't read it, you should. And then a friend of mine mentioned a book that she owns and she was planning on reading for the longest time. And turns out I had it as well. And we decided to buddy read it. And that is The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Now, generally, I'm not much of a self-help book person. I find them rather shallow in most cases and not very helpful. They sound like an ad every time to me, like they're trying to sell you something, not really help you. And um, so yeah, I generally don't read them, but because we discussed it, I thought it would be interesting to have a buddy rate on that and critically uh, look into the phrases that are used here and, you know, utilize this book as a starting point for a conversation. And we did. I didn't read much of it. This is the one book that I didn't finish. Actually, I'm about 20% into it. The month turned out to be very, very difficult very busy. I would say we picked it up on the 6th of September and I still haven't finished it. I haven't even touched it after our initial uh, talk. We had we had uh, scheduled to have these meetings where we would discuss the portions that we read. Unfortunately, I was only able to stick to the first one and I am hopeful to be able to do so soon. But so far, to give you my impression, it is shallow the way I see it. The author is using a lot of salesman language to try to convince you and also a lot of vulgarities, which I find rather lame. Now, I know that this book was published a number of years ago and maybe at the time that it was published, that was okay, but I found him trying to be a little bit too edgy and that makes me cringe every time. Honestly, it just didn't sound sincere, but again, I haven't finished it yet, so I shouldn't be judging it too early. I will let you know once I'm done. Now, right after finishing The Picture of Dorian Gray, I felt a lot like reading more classics and more classics of this nature where there's a little bit of supernatural and a lot of self-reflection and a little bit of darkness. So I picked Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and The Merry Men and Other Stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is the author of Treasure Island. Um, I haven't read that one as well, but I have it here. And initially I was going to read only The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and then leave the rest of the stories. But once I finished it, I kind of liked his writing style, so I thought, why not give the rest a try? I have heard a lot about The Merry Men, but never really read it. And I've heard nothing about the rest of the stories. And so I continued reading them and finished the book on the 16th of September. So it took me um, around 19, 10 days to finish it. It's a very small book. I absolutely enjoyed it. Every single story in this um, anthology is worth your attention. Now, some of them were a little bit difficult to read. The Merry Men specifically, there's one character that is using very archaic language, I would say, or maybe a strange dialect from the region that he's from. So it was very difficult for me to understand what he's saying because I'm not, I'm not a native English speaker. Yet, I absolutely loved all of these stories. I highly recommend this anthology. Mm. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde specifically, I remember reading in my teenage years and being absolutely flabbergasted by the plot twist. At this point, there's probably not a person on this planet that hasn't, uh, is not familiar with it, but I will try not to spoil it anyway. I, this time, knowing the plot twist, it was very easy. The, I couldn't believe that I didn't guess it to begin with, but still, um, the darkness that is reflected in this story was very appealing to me. And then all the rest of the stories in this anthology also have a supernatural element and also are reflecting on the dark side of human nature. And the main characters are always put into a very strange conundrum. I think my favorite story in this anthology was Olala and uh, the treasure of Mr. Let me just see the exact title. The treasure of Frank Hart. Frank, I think it's Frank Hart. These two are my favorite ones. I, I absolutely adored them. If nothing else, I recommend you read these two. It's a great, great anthology. I gave it four stars because again, some of the stories were a little bit difficult to read. And then on the 10th of September, I decided to pick The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Now, this is an author that I've heard so much about. A lot of opposing opinions, I would say. Some love him, some hate him. 
I personally never have read anything from him before and The Alchemist seems to be his most famous work so far, at least to me it was the most famous one and I've been meaning to read it for years now. So when I picked it earlier this year I had put it kind of as a goal to finish it before that, before the end of it, before the end of the year and uh, I managed to do so. I read it within two days, I finished it on the 12th of September and this is a great story. That's all I can say. It's so atmospheric, so inspirational uh, in a lot of ways. It follows a young shepherd who dreams of realizing his personal legend. This is a phrase very much used in this story. It represents a mixture of a lot of different cultures and the collaboration between people and how when you're trying to achieve your goal and put your best foot forward, the entire universe is conspiring to help you. He faces a lot of difficulties and a lot of hardship uh, but rarely does he give up and when he does it's for a little bit and then hope surges again and he does he does a lot of reflecting. Um, I really really like it. I was thinking of giving it four stars but then when I thought back to it I couldn't find anything that I didn't enjoy so I ultimately gave it five stars. Oh by the way this is the anniversary edition, it's a pocketbook edition obviously but um, it's the 25th year anniversary and has these lovely these lovely little illustrations th throughout it uh, that made the reading experience so much nicer. I always appreciate a little bit of it of an illustration although they're not mind-blowing by any measure. Um, so yeah, very nice. And then on the 10th of September as well, after avoiding it for years, I finally decided to pick up The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This is book one in the second era of Ms. Bourne's, of the Ms. Bourne series and book four in the overall series. I was very hesitant to pick up this book to begin with for stupid reasons I would say. A lot of people on the internet have given it kind of a low rating and were deeming it subpar very often so I'd, I stayed away from it for four or five years at this point but finally I decided to pick it up because the, the second era of Mistborn was the only part of the Cosmere so far I had not read minus the rhythm of war. So after realizing that the fourth and final book in the second era of Mistborn is coming out in November, I put it as a goal to myself to finish all the books that are out until now and I actually did. After finishing the first book The Alloy of Law, I read Shadows of Self and The Bands of Mourning. Now I basically binge read these three books and I enjoyed them immensely. They're by no means perfect but they're way better than what I expected them to be and if you would like to hear more about my my opinion on them, you can watch my full spoiler free review of the second era of Mistborn over here. Long story short, I gave each of the three books four stars. And then I decided to pick up a book that I've been thinking about reading since like 10 years maybe at this point and that is A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is an, a classic epic fantasy about a young man who becomes the most notorious wizard in the Earthsea. I'm not going to tell you anything about it because it's a very short book and you probably already have heard of it. This is the first book in the Earthsea series, I believe. It's a classic fantasy, it's written in the classic fantasy style that is way more prone to describe things than show them but either way I enjoyed it so much. This was so well written. The main character was so multi-layered and which I didn't expect. To be honest, I'm used to classic fantasies being way more black and white but in this case we have a person that is actually struggling with his morality and that left me so happy. It also left me very emotional in some moments that I didn't expect. There is a scene on a sand drift where our protagonist is meeting two old people that left me just like I was very very close to sobbing but it was in a good way. I very much enjoyed it. I gave this one five stars. And last, but definitely not least, a book that I technically finished in October. Today is the 2nd of October and I just finished it, but I will count it towards my September reads because I started it on the 22nd of September and that is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is a, an epic fantasy and it's the first book in the Stormlight Archive series. It's also arguably my favorite book of all times. I think it's only overshadowed by the second book in this series. This is a reread for me. I picked it for the first time in 2019, read it within a few days and right after that picked 
words of radiance that's how much i liked it it wasn't any different right now except i liked it even more if that's possible now on reread i'm able to pick up some of the subtle hints not all of them i don't think but i was able to pick up on a lot of foreshadowing and that was phenomenal i am so happy i reread this one and i am just itching to pick up the next book in the series i'm buddy reading these with a friend of mine who's never read them before so i will have to wait for her but still it was such a great experience i gave it five stars i would give it infinity stars out of five if i could this is this is such a great book if you haven't read it please do so and that concludes my wrap up I am so happy with this reading month. The books are a little bit less than what I usually read in the month, but to compensate for that, pretty much all of them were phenomenal. I'm curious to know what you read in the month of September and whether you read uh, any of the books that I mentioned in this video, whether recently or before that, what you thought of them, what you think of my opinion, anything that you would like to share. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all a great day and I'll see you soon in another video. Once upon a time, there was a person who wasn't subscribed to my channel, and then they did, and they lived happily ever after. This could be you.